you are no you you you've only gotten about out of twenty eight days you have about twenty more uh no, I think you guys okay let me let me let me switch over here okay. first off uh welcome everybody to bears of dragons where a bunch of us nerdy ass bears sit around and play Dungeons and dragons. Thank you. Uh, do, do you actually remember what happened last time? Yes. Yeah, it's there. Welcome back. Yeah, you killed them. You saved somebody else to, from being taken to Valkenveld and then eventually to Mento Berenthon. No, we're not going. To, you're not going to sloop a dupe. Crackle Stig. It's a dwarven name. As long as there are mushrooms they can steal the light from. <sighs> Just because somebody has, has fangs and can walk on walls, you think they're a blood drinker. Who knows what will happen during the journey. But do you know why you are going to do Grackleskook? Right, it's on, on route. En route. To uh, Neverlight Grove and uh, Grackleskook is on the way, so. And Pito, I believe, uh, the uh, Darrow is the one who's helping you navigate. 
think he, he knows the way. He knows how to reach Crackle's dude by the southern route out of Falcon Bells. So and that's the way you're going. All right. So you all have uh, been able to successfully take a long rest. And you wake up. I'm not going to say in the morning because there's no morning in the end of dark. It's still dark, lack of a better word. You see the little phosphorescence from various mushrooms. Uh, and so today, uh, what pace are you traveling at? Fast pace, just normal pace, slow pace. Food has been made. All right. Any case, let's see who is the lucky person to start our trip off. Moving at a fast pace. Roderick, I need you to roll me D20. Now roll me a roll me a D six. Three. All right, you're in a nice dimly you you travel through a dim through several dimly lit pa passages uh, that are lit by phosphorescent moss and lichen which are, seem to be more common in the Underdark. All right. So as you're uh, traveling, I would like somebody to roll me a survival check. Anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. Did you accidentally roll twice? Right. 
Uh, I would definitely say uh, Roderick would be able to easily spot a nice little camping site. As everybody starts getting tired for a long day, uh, thanks to good berries and uh, a great water spell from Lassiter. Uh, you were able to, you have food and water. You're all, everybody. He says this all uh, while doing the push-ups and not missing a beat in his voice. He's saying this while he's continuing to move up and down in his push-ups. And, and it sounds exactly like that. I don't know if you've heard anybody when they're trying to talk while doing push-ups. Or how you would talk as if you, if you were doing push-ups. Yeah. A little odd.
without missing a beat. A little mushroom comes up to you, starts bobbing up and down next to you. See his his little little mushroom arms. He's, he's basically doing squats. See uh, Haley uh, uh, puts down her uh, was it axe. Uh, comes next to you and s starts doing push-ups. She's 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 breathing. She's got her breathing rhythm as she's going up and down, like like in going down, out going up, in going down, going up. Robert probably switches that sometimes to just one arm. <laughs> There's a couple extra limbs there for some reason. <laughs> Eventually, everybody else gets tired and uh, heads to bed. Or whatever they can make of it. Bed rolls. Stool curls up uh, next to Lassiter. All right, Roderick, need you to roll me a d20. Eighteen. Train your dragon. I need you to roll me another D twenty. Uh, as you're uh, camping uh, in this kind of indenting outcrop surrounded by some phosphorescent mushrooms, some really tall ones and some short ones and such, but it's hidden relatively on site from many paths. Paths. Uh, you see uh, on the dark... Um, a humanoid creature uh, seems to be uh, walking by some or is has his hand against the wall uh, looks relatively emaciated and it's just kind of like looking it around looking back Like that's a completely different campaign. This has nothing to do with it.
who are you? Who are you? Uh, he, he starts running out. You totally catch up to him. Ah! He uh, he uh, takes it and just scarfs it down. Uh, looking a little closer, he looks to, that he's like a half elf. Says, "I escaped from from some drow. Uh, I haven't eaten anything in days." You see uh, on his wrists are um, some metal manacles. Uh, not ones that are attached to his feet or neck or anything, just, just around his wrists and they're still together. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'll follow you back. Seeing everybody, his eyes kind of Widen he looks at the he's uh he's already finished his ration as he's you've got him back. He scarfs it down. He'll he'll start chugging it down. <coughs> how, how, how how have you survived down here? You you were able to feed everybody. passes out. Everybody wakes up in the morning. Uh, you have a, uh, there's a half elf uh, lying near where Roderick is. Um, it seems to be steady. Make me me a medicine check. He, 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 you, you do get sport in the face, and he goes, "What are you doing?" Uh, 
he 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 he's like what's a pulse What's a heart? You you take by by how he's asking the questions. He's really young, so he might not even know much about his own physiology. Is that all the, 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 the liquid stuff that comes out of your bodies when you get cut? No. Oh, I don't think we are like that. My kids. My people. Uh, I'm going to say it's a man just because I, that's how I had said it. Hey, he, he, he scarfs it down. Uh, Barrows. See, he's wearing a pair of manacles. And night? Would, how did you know it was night? Uh, uh, no, I, I think Jim Jar has it. He points over to Jim Jar. Says, ah, I got him right here. Uh, let me take a look at him. Hey, uh, Hey, uh, Barrows, you said your name was, uh, g g give me, give me your hands. Let me see, your, your, see if we can get those manacles off of you. He takes a look at the manacles, puts them with the key, puts it, doesn't seem to work, and says, hold on, hold that thought. Goes in his bag, pulls out a pair of lock picks, and says, hold on a sec. Ah, clink. Um, he's able to get the manacles off. It takes about a, a couple of minutes. He seems to have a little trouble and does does curse a little. He's not exactly sure what he says um, because you would assume it's under common or something. But it's it, but by the way he's saying it, it, it sounds like somebody's just cursing. Barros, B-A-R, 
OS. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much like shit. Fuck. Uh, your medicine check would tell, well, you, you figure out that stool's physiology isn't like yours, so you can't really necessarily find a pulse. Um, as for the half out, you did two of them and I didn't resolve the first one. <laughs> the, uh, the, um, uh, half elf, uh, it's, he's, he was exhausted. It, there's a combination of exhaustion and, uh, malnutrition. Um, having the the rations that that Roderick gave him, and probably a few days after having a good berry each day, um, he would he'll probably get to a better um, better place. But it's gonna it would take a few days. Um, he would probably not be able to travel at a fast pace, um, and so it might slow down a little bit. Uh, see if I do that for you, says, says Ron. Uh, I just want to get out of there. Under dark, I don't care about you folks. What do you think? I haven't left yet. But if somebody's going to be slowing us down. That would just slow me down. We'll see. Um, not really. Uh, there's a few tunnels that come off of where where you were at, so um, it, it's a completely different direction. You're on a page which has everybody basically in a nice line with their names under. <laughs> Hey, pleased to meet you. Prince Staring Devil says I am not a self made prince. I have land up and up on the surface. 
He, he, he's, a, he's not even... I am an elven prince, I tell you. And he's, he's not an elf. He's a quite elf. <laughs> he gets he's a little nervous around Sarah. He's a fish man. But Peter's the name. Syrah and Healy, I think. Do you guys want to uh, mend your marching orders? Yes. She's, she's still there. She's just very quiet nowadays. And she gets very bubbly when she rages. Well, here's the problem is I wouldn't be surprised if most of the time, uh, whenever possible, Roderick's actually uh, probably right directly over Haley. You, or, or you could be, yeah. Because he's walking on the ceiling. Or walking on the side of the wall near where she is. There, if the ceiling's too high or something. Uh, nice thing about Broderick, uh, he does not have to worry about moving through people because he just moves over them. Mr. 55 feet of movement. Practically twice what anybody's normal movement is. All right. The, got here. Uh, good barriers are passed out. Uh, actually, do you, would would you do the good berry water thing uh, more towards the end of the day or the beginning of the day? Because that is a spell which you would have to mark off. Yeah. So. And when in doubt, you can end up foraging or something.
Well, they would be able to see that you're doing casting some sort of spell over it. Uh, those people would be able to figure out that the spell is prestidigitation. Uh, the only people that would know what it tastes like is you. <laughs> Unless you're doing it on all of them. <laughs> You had the flare of All right, I just realized I need to refill my beverage. Uh so while I'm doing that, last year I want you to roll me a D twenty. I'll be right back. So as you are traveling, you come to a point where the tunnels start getting relatively narrow and you have to switch to your single file order. Uh, and you see amongst you is a similar light of the unknown lichen, which I'm not sure if anybody has mentioned is called Theris Res. that in the chat so people can see what the word looks like. This looks like um, the same sort of uh, algae or lichen that um, caused Haley and Roderick to act strangely. Uh, give me an arcana check. You're not sure. A... It could work if you problem maybe if you studied it for a while, but having seen the effects, it's up to you. You could collect some if you want to. Um, I need everybody to roll me a wisdom saving throw. Okay. 
no two nat twenties in there, except for Syra. All right, Syra, roll me a D ten. Right, roll me a D one hundred. Sixty-eight. Hmm. Sarah, as you're uh, walking along, um, uh, and then kind of looking around, and especially while you're gathering the, the some of that fares res, um, you keep hearing some voices. You look around, and you see some faces of people from your past. They just kind of wander off. Uh, you also see some purple jellyfish creatures kind of floating through the tunnel. For some reason, Roderick's skin looks bright pink. And uh, Haley is like black as pitch. Lassiter seems to be glowing. It's a weird blue color. Uh, you see, uh, you look at Ront, who you swear was bald before, but for some reason he has this uh, big poofy afro. That has like streaks of like neon green and purple. A couple of minutes later, you everybody's back to normal. This is only only Cyrus sees this. Unless Cyrus says anything, you don't know anything. It only lasts for about two minutes. Uh, I would also like, also uh, mark uh, that you are, are one. You have a sanity counter of one. I believe the D and D beyond, or the not the D and D beyond sheets. The roll twenty sheets actually have a sanity. Score. So you could use that to mark it if you'd like. Otherwise, put it wherever you want. Roderick and Haley. Yeah, you have this sanity z score of zero. That's probably a good thing. Uh, it's actually with your. Maybe I'm gonna I'm gonna have to pull it up to to, to verify that. It shows that. It's with your, like, ability stats. At the bottom of the the ability stats on the left, yeah, strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, charisma, sanity. So actually, it'd probably be more like. Uh, More of a sanity score of like 12 because your sanity modifier would be up. 
<laughs> up by one. Because everybody's looking at that thing. <laughs> That should be a feature request. Uh, add optional sanity score. And I don't know if it's just because of the, the sheet that was to add to the module, but I noticed that while well, working on somebody's page for my own sanity. Look, be the medical professional that you are and uh, observe the ones that are being effective to help to possibly provide treatment in the future. <laughs> yeah. Cyrus, Cyrus, <laughs> Cyrus stops, collects some fares res, but for a moment, a couple moments while she's uh, collecting it, she kind of looks around. <laughs> Just like... What? <laughs> Look at your hand, you got four. <laughs> it's just things are just looking weird, but after a moment everything returns to normal. So it, it's up to you whether you say anything to anybody. And, and this could also have been something that happened during one of your like uh, short rests while you're walking, because you're not going to be like walking for all day straight. I'm sure you're going to take rests here and there, uh, especially with uh, bearers with you. <laughs> no, 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 no. You guys are. Oh, oh, I forgot to ask for pace, but I'm assuming you're doing normal. Yeah, so he's, he's keeping on fine. He might lag behind here and there, ask for a couple more stops. But overall, you seem to be making a, a regular pace. Nothing nothing detrimental. Mm, nope, it's that one. All right. Uh, now I need some survival strikes to find a good place to bed down for the evening. Yeah. Anybody who wants to be looking. If you don't want to look, don't roll. Sarah, after your experience, maybe you do want to take a rest. <laughs> All right. You do find a uh, nice open space. Um, they give you plenty of space to all kind of lie out. Easy to keep watch uh, around. Uh, so a good little campsite that you that everybody can be at least be comfortable uh similar watches i'm assuming it's just pretty much going to be roderick Hey Lee again tries to emulate you. Uh you 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 outlast her, of course. 
And lesser since you are first watch, I need you to roll me a d20. Roderick. Yeah. Right. After uh, after a while, you wake up Gage to allow him to have a turn and watch. And for both of you, you're the rest long rest goes by uneventfully. Everybody wakes up except for Barrows. Uh, you can't find him. Uh, go ahead and throw me a survival check. Uh, can't seem to find anything. Um, a lot of this place is rather rocky, uh, so even looking for other markers or, or anything like that, you don't see anything. Peter speaks up. Uh, we're, we're still very far out. I mean, looking for him will slow us down. Rot grunts. It's like, leave him to the wolves. Um, have, I mean, have your owl roll me a perception check. No. Didn't, not, didn't notice anything uh, uh, out of the morning. He just told you that he was a farmer, uh, relatively close to Waterdeep, but you couldn't see Waterdeep from 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 his farm. But um, it, it wasn't; it was within a day's travel to to get to Waterdeep. Everybody would like to look for him. Can, can uh, roll me an investigation check. Roderick, uh, you notice 
uh, down one of the nearby tunnels uh, a foot. Running, running down, down the tunnel, you see uh, a little what looks kind of like a just a inlet in the rocks, very small, small cave. Uh, but you see um, Barrows lying on the ground, uh, throat slit. And looking carefully on the ground, you notice uh, looks like some sort of ritual might have happened here. Not being someone of the arcane persuasion or even religious persuasion. You wouldn't necessarily be able to tell what type of ritual or anything, but it's definitely looks like this was a ritualistic murder. There is a cur curved Chris, like dagger like thing on this nearby. How are people reacting to it? Go ahead and roll me an insight. Um, Jim Jar seems to be kind of like the like he he never really had any attachments, Barrows. Like he didn't really. He could be here, he could not be here, whatever. Uh, uh, but he doesn't, he seems, it doesn't seem like he would have wanted to do anything like that. Um, and is, has, he's not sad, but he's on the sad end of things. Like, somebody you didn't know just died. You're going to have some sort of empathy for that, but, um, or sympathy even. For it, but nothing that's truly affecting him. Topsy and Turvey's uh, eyes, they're a little shocked. Um, Prince Darendel um, seems to be kind of on the, the empathetic, sympathetic uh, side of things as well. Uh, looked like he was doing uh, some sort of prayer in Elvish. Uh, Sarah's kind of the same thing, with a little nonplus. This side, kind of along the lines of Jim Jar, except in his own way. Uh, Shushar will have also done more of a prayer or something to for his passing. Bupito and Ront seem to be nonplussed. And Eldith, Eldith, Eldith is also uh, one. She's more like mad on her guard sort of thing. Um. I would have to say your 15 would go on that. Uh, you've never seen these cars before. But it's also not like you've searched everybody's bags to see what they own or anything. I, I would say if you... Jim... If you, you would probably have to, to maybe even show it to none of the, your escape captives are really helping with the investigation or anything. Uh, but they are there if you want to show them anything. So you really more have told them the news.
Oh, you can roll me a religion check if you'd like. This, this is, you definitely know that this is a religious sacrificial sort of thing. However, it's not to any sort of god or demon or devil that you would know of that a religious person would be sacrificing for. Um, it is more along the lines of it's it, it has connotations of uh, I don't want to say this more of a de demonic sort of thing but nothing to easily identify nothing that could really identify who the sacrifice would have been made for Uh, there are some some markings. Uh, what languages do you read? It ha it's you can't really read it, but it seems that the the chris itself has some some markings that are vaguely elvish but not What languages do you read? Oh, yeah, you can. In, it there there are some sort of runic symbols. Um, it it I don't know what the right words would be, but it does refer to like the Spider Queen. Uh, if you say that just to everybody, uh, Sarah sa says, she's my people's matron. With, with that, you probably could assume that this is a drow, Chris. Possibly something that was stolen from Belt and Velve. Uh, go ahead and give me a uh, perception check. Uh, nope. Your 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 nose is running. <laughs> it's just repeating your sense of spell.
hey, I mean, even with Zone of Truth, as long as they're not lying, they don't have to necessarily tell you the truth. Uh, there is a pool of blood, which seems to have, have traced in some, some of the runic designs. It doesn't really have much on her, just pretty much just clothes. Mm -hmm. A slit throat. It was, it looks like it was a clean cut. Uh, recent enough that it happened during the night sometime. Somehow they slipped out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was about five or six. Nobody's missing. Well, unless you count Paris, but. The Underdark is big. Draw a fungi. Pouring some sort of funeral rites. <laughs> and off we go. All right, uh, Sarah, roll me a d20.
I need you to roll me a d20 and a second d20. Syrah. You uh, end up uh, getting through a passage uh, which is filled with webs. It's like they stand out about 100 feet. Yeah, go ahead. Do you see this area is dimly lit with some virus reds as well? And then rolls to a much lower number. Two, two, two. <laughs> Not 22, 22. All right. Uh, you don't really see anything. Uh, looks like it would be some difficult terrain to get, get through. Um, but uh, your owl uh, sends you, um, points out to you, uh in a direction you he does it does see something moving can you give me a roll of a d4 please thank you The entire passageway is just covered with webs, and it's some of it's blocking your blocking your way, but it's webbing.
start. It's it's not that tight of a corridor where you're in. Uh, you could easily march to abreast. starts burning away. Does a nice section of, of webbing to help clear the path, clear a path. They could easily uh, uh, clear a path uh, that could uh, probably for about 50 feet at a time. I'm streaming fine. He's in the back. And uh, while you're doing that, Roderick, what's your passive? It's 14, right? Uh, uh, you do notice um, that on your left and your right, on, up on the walls, uh, you do hear some chittering and two giant spiders. All right. Let me figure out a map here. Breast order. I need everybody to roll me initiative. That's what a tank should be. Did I give you the NPC's character sheets? Okay. Because they cannot avoid this combat. I, if you rolled, I can just put it in. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Just make sure you... Yeah, just make sure you click your token for the future. Sorry, you have advantage on. Okay. I gotcha. Gotcha. That works. Nope. 
right click there we go there it is bear with me this might take a moment Yeah, they can't avoid this combat. Oh, we oh, got. Oh, I already did. Do that again. Here we go. Almost done. All right. Let's, uh, let's get some ballad music. There it is. All right, Haley. Spider deck save for the uh, fifteen. Oh, it has rage in there. Yeah. 13 slash you two rage. Ow. That really hurt. This might go quickly. Uh, but it's the giant spider's turn.
I'll just go ahead and and bite Kaylee. Uh, and totally miss. And the other one is looking right at you, Roderick. Uh, and is going to attack you with its web. All right. You take uh, seven piercing to poison, and you are restrained. Uh, Turvy says, uh, 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 "Stool, stool, get back here! Come on, come on!" He was just trying to urge Stool to get to safety. Uh, Eldith, gonna come down here and help out with Haley. Eldith, where are you? There she is. Makes a couple of attacks with her short sword. That does it. That does not. But that spider ain't looking too hot. Sarah has a lot of people in front of him and he can't really see very well to shoot anything. So he's just going to hold an action to tell he's able to see something. Uh, you hear some uh, curses in Orkish uh, from the back of the caravan. He's, he's cursing up a storm. Something about about people in the way. He really wants to be up there, but he can't get there. Oh, did you not get in there? You rolled, right? There you are. Hold on. That turn. 16. Uh, why don't you go ahead and go? Uh, what I would do for this is put another U. Womp womp. Uh, anything else? Yeah. Syrah, you saw a really, really kind of cool thing. Well, I'm not sure if you would think it would be cool. Where Gage looks like he's drawing his sword, but the shadow just kind of like comes out, out of him. And what looks to be him appears right next to the spider makes a sword swing but misses
Yeah, it's still in attack, so. Mm -hmm. Strangely enough, you do not hit the web. Sure, roll me in acrobatics. And so she comes comes over her rapier with the this green flame engulfing it. You swipe as you're kind of like charging towards the the giant spider, you just swipe towards Roderick trying to it, with the intent of hitting the web, but it whiffs. Um, but you keep going, and it looks like you actually didn't try to actually try to swipe it. You just kind of like were passing out and had your blade out, uh, and you you run up to the spider, put your uh, offhand on it, and just kind of like push push up and flip right on over so you're on the other side of the thing and you're just out there ready for the next attack and then the green flame disappears <laughs> it, it, okay but back next round but <laughs> maybe back next round but it's no longer there all right topsy picks up stool Topsy picks up stool and uh, basically swaps places with him. And uh, what, does, what does Topsy have? And he just pulls out a short sword and is just like ready to attack anything that might get close. Kind of blocking stool. Uh, Bupito, um, uh, leans back against the wall and just watches. Leaf. Leaf. Can't move. Oh, okay. I gotcha. Mm -hmm. I can roll attack. Yep. Uh, well, it looks like you rolled the damage. Mm, that's right. There we are. Yeah. Uh, you don't need to, uh, because you whip it on the, uh, it, the, the storm whip whips out and, uh, smacks it into, in the eye, um, and must have gotten pretty far in to, to hit its brain or something because it slumps down to the ground dead. But you could use your magic stone on the other one. 
Yeah, sure. I'm like, oh yeah, th that's right, there's two spiders. That'll hit. Oh, you need to roll the damage too. You rolled it to the hit, but you didn't roll the damage. There we are. Eight points of damage. Lassiter! Pedo's leaning down uh, against the wall, grunts, uh, cursing up and just kind of like looking around people. Um, you can't seem to get through. It's kind of a tight squeeze. You can't really either. Sure. Let's uh, save wisdom. It fails. It also, yeah. It also. Uh, I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna say because it rolls that this would be critical damage. It is hurt, so it's probably dead. Roll again. Yeah, roll, roll a second time. Because you crit. There you go. It takes 10 damage. <laughs> Would have been better if it wasn't a 2 on the first roll. <laughs> womp womp. Roderick, you just you just saw saw uh, a shadow appear uh, and uh, make a swipe at the the spider. You see, Syra runs across, runs around you. You thought it was gonna free you from the web, but instead she just jumped over the the giant spider for some reason. It's kind of weird. In the meantime, I need you to make a uh, strength check. You're probably gonna make, uh, or you could try to get out by making a strength test, which actually suits your restraint. That's the only thing you can do. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's looking pretty hurt. Fifteen. You can make the uh, strength check as, a, as an action to break out. You're still under the restrained condition. I'm sorry. You manifest your arms, but you, the, the arms are restrained. <sighs> Some strong, strong uh, webbings. You could probably break out of it. So, go ahead and make me a wisdom check. Okay. As wise as you are, you're probably going to make this. Yeah, you can totally make it. <laughs> You only needed a 12. <laughs> it wasn't that hard. All right. Stool um, is going to hide. Where is Stool? There he is. He thinks he's hidden. That's a really bad roll.
Jim Jarrow. Here he is. Jim Jarrow is going to come over here by a gauge and fire a crossbow shot. And misses. Shushar. Uh, he's just going to stay in the back and like ready his spear. Haley. Saved. Yeah, and let's get this dead. Ta -da. Uh, roll me investigation check. See if they add anything around here. All right, where are they? All right, Sarah, roll me a uh, d10. Uh, they apparently found a few, uh, a few things, uh, which may have been like some prey they some unfortunate souls that that pass by or something uh you find 16 copper pieces uh a map which base you could probably tell that seems to involve the current area uh it looks like it was just like hastily stretched out like he's trying to map the caverns or something um a vial which has what looks to be some ashes and an invitation which you can't quite read. Um, actually, what 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 languages do you do you read? Uh, Lassiter, it's an invitation to a some sort of party in Menzo Bear's home. It's an invitation to some sort of party in Menzo Barathon. Um. Yeah. Uh, it, there does seem to be a, uh, a cave with an X nearby. Actually, uh, let, let me slightly amend the statement. You do see that it's got some symbols over, uh, indicating it over in this area. So that's the cave it's referencing.
because I am a benevolent DM, I decided to roll on Donjon <laughs> the treasure hoard. I set the challenge rating to one. I set it to treasure hoard, and this is what it gave me. <laughs> So for those of you who are quite looking at the chat and uh, or can can see that and anybody watching the video, there is 2,400 copper pieces, 800 silver pieces, 90 gold pieces, three obsidian, uh, rotos crosite, uh, tur turquoise, a uh, little stone feather so you wouldn't quite know what that exactly is unless somebody identifies it um and a spell scroll which Sarah will be able to tell you this is the say spell scroll for your movement and some sort of potion That potion look like down here. Uh, that would be a group discussion. Uh, it's, I think the rule, okay, so I think the rules are that if it's on your spell list, you can use it. Um, if it's not in your spell list, uh, but you have the spell casting feature, you can use it, but you have to roll a, um, a, um, a spellcraft check, which is basically a roll using your, uh, spell casting ability modifier which is 10 plus the level of the spell. Um, and if you are do not have the spell casting feature, you just cannot. So the the potion looks like it's red with a there's red in the liquid continuously contracts to a tiny bead and then expands to color the clear liquid around it. So it just like, it's like a clear liquid, but it, there's this red which goes small and then grows to fill up the entire. The entire vial. Give me a wisdom check. I uh, give me an insight check specifically. Starts with an I. You swear to God you've seen some sort of liquor do this exact same thing. However, you don't have it. Syra and Roderick were looking at the pile. You see it, it'd be like... <gasps>
Does anybody out there identify a spell right now by by any chance, or have access to it? I just I just want to know if somebody has has identify. Okay. So so you have a stone feather and and this potion with liquid in it. So you don't actually know what it is. <laughs> Sadly, neither of these requires attunement, so that you can't just <laughs> do it like that. Cyro might be able to examine the feather, though. <laughs> when character knows what exactly will happen, or what, what PC knows, or player knows, what exactly would happen, but knows what his character would think and has trouble coming to terms with the, <laughs> with the differences between the two. This is what is currently going on in Spidey's mind. Roll, roll me a luck check. Roll, roll me a quick luck check. Uh, uh, just roll me a d20. Uh, you do remember that it burned when you, when you tried the liquor that you're remembering, not that this is the liquor that you're remembering, but you think that it looks like the liquor that you're remembering. It burned, um, it hurt, but it was alcoholic. It was just very, very strong. It burned. It was not, it, it did not even taste good. But it's alcoholic. <laughs> it was alcohol. <laughs> take, it, take, take that information as you would. <laughs> okay, sure. Okay, I got it. I mean, I know, you know it burned, but it was alcohol. You haven't had any alcohol and you don't know how long at this point. I mean, you've, you, but you haven't had any problems in the past few days. It's, it, you haven't had any headaches. You haven't really had much of a craving for it, but. There's only so much magic can do for you. <laughs> All right. So everybody watches him chug down this vial of, uh, of liquid. Last year, it didn't really taste like anything. It was like water. You look over at Roderick and he seems to be much taller than you remember. You look around and you see that stool is taller than you. Everybody is larger. Everybody else sees him chug it and as he's chugging it, he slowly shrinks to just a little bit shorter than the stool. And the stool's pretty short. This owl comes flying down next to you, tilts its head, and just kind of leans down. And he goes, flies up next to Cyrus. This really large owl comes flying down, takes a quizzical look at you, and flies up and lands on Cyrus' shoulder. Uh, 
I would also like you to roll me a wisdom saving throw. Okay, that's fine. About a minute later, uh, you return to normal size. No, no, a minute later it turns back to normal, so. Looks all sheepish. And with that, you continue on burning away webs with the torch. Uh, you're able. It is slow going. It takes some time for the the webbing to burn a pathway, but eventually you make it out of the area. And I need you to roll me a survival check to find a place, a good place to bed down. There is a cave, a nice big cave inlet, kind of where, like, the place where you were, except uh, it is completely hidden behind a uh, group of really tall, thick mushrooms. Um, you had just kind of spotted it out of the corner of your eye, um, uh, but you were able to... but. Uh, getting that kind of like, hmm, what is that? Went over and you were able to find. And there's a way to get to it, but the, the way is not really obvious or anything. Uh, and it would have been hard to spot in the first place uh, if you hadn't specifically been looking for that type of place. Luck was on your side. You find a very secure hidden cave to hide. Bupido. Bupido. <laughs> well, there was a lot of people in the way. Seems like you were able to take care of it. I'm not much of a fighter. Sure. Uh, 
based off of his garb, he does have a hooked spear. Uh, so he does have something that he could defend with, but he doesn't really look like a fighting type individual. If, if he got attacked, he could probably defend himself, but not really as athletic or armored like that of Gage or Haley or uh, Eldith or Broderick or even Syrah. I don't know how you could say such a thing. Lassiter, what's what's your insight modifier? Yeah. He is a lion. You hear he, he when he puts down his bag, you hear this clink of metal. Yeah, he, he says, I don't know how you could think such a thing. You, you, you feel like he's hiding something. And he puts down his bag and it clinks. Like a bunch of metal. It's my personal items. No, your concern. I know, it's very awful. Are you accusing me of murdering that poor man? So, uh, the double negative makes proof positive. Give yourself away. Well, wouldn't you be defensive if somebody was accusing you of murder? Hmm. I, d have I done anything to really indicate that I would ever harm any of you? I was in the back with Ront. Ront didn't even help, but he, he had the same problem. And you certainly put well, everyone in the front. It was only two spiders. It's my personal items. Ron is uh, currently snoring. There's Roderick. He is literally doing it on the wall. He is like about two to three feet up the wall. And he's actually like doing push-ups like this. I mean, he's there. He's just doing push-ups. <laughs> or push... sides?
Roderick, what's your passive perception? 14. Um, both you and Lassiter, as you're having this conversation, Lassiter probably also kind of looking around dur during this, but uh, Roderick, you you hear the sound and then you look in the direction and you see Lupito uh, uh, exiting the cave. He's already gone. All right, only a stealth check. Uh, uh, Roderick just suddenly like disappears in the shadows. You turn back to Roderick. He's not there anymore. Uh, Roderick, you uh, come out of, out of the cave and you see uh, Bupito uh, running down a separate corridor than where you guys were normally heading. All right, easily catch up to him. <laughs> 50, fucking 55 feet. Base movement. You, you picked the right one. <laughs> also race. Because <laughs> race, race gave you, first, race gave you an extra five feet. <laughs> second, second, <laughs> second, <laughs> Second, you took mobile, which gave you an extra 10. Third, you're a fucking monk, which gets another 10. <laughs> you, you, someone's dash is only five feet longer than how fast you can go in, in a regular movement. Uh, you easily catch up to him. Oh, okay, so you're, you're, you're just staying behind following him. Okay, he's just running down the hall. He's He's got his bag, bag, and he's just, continu just continuing going. He's just running. Um, like on the ceiling. <laughs> Uh, that's okay. I don't need you anymore. Anymore. Thank you. Excuse me. Bye. He's running down the hall. Just, just, just leave me alone. He's a good dude. All right. Let me attack. He ducks right under and ke keeps going. All right. Oh, I'll hit. He he's he stops. He he pulls out his spear. He makes an attack at you. Uh, and totally misses, uh, something about you being on the ceiling. Will you just leave me alone? None of your business. Yeah. He makes another attack at you. Uh, 19 hits. And uh, uh, take four position damage.
You guys have not taken your long rest yet. Um, yeah, you probably would have gotten your short rest. Next save. 21. And you only have one attack right now? Alright. Alright. Uh, he tries to swipe at you. Just the guy is not hitting each other. Uh, yeah, he, he, you knock him unconscious. Okay. You said you would carry him back. Mm-hmm. Bring the Daryl back. He's unconscious. Not there. Uh, it takes you a couple of minutes, but you do find it, and he's got the there's the bags on the ground. Uh, you see a bunch of various types of daggers. He has good. He, he comes back and he's got a bag full of daggers. <laughs> You successfully tie up a Darrow.
there it's a variety of different types of daggers uh, you do find another one of the same type of crits um, uh, but uh, amongst those different ones um, roll me a religion check Lasseter Oh right, yeah, anybody who wants to, the, who's proficient in religion, can roll. Um, Syra, most of these, most of these daggers, actually both of you will be able to tell that most of these daggers look very specifically like ritual daggers, like they're not something that that like a rogue or. Uh, so the, an average person would have as a, just a dagger weapon um, or just a dagger they would have on hand for doing things they just need a small knife for small sharp knife for uh, but they don't really say anything on them it's more of uh, different religious runic type of things Well, the one that looks like the one that you found, the, there's like one of those. So he, he had two of these crisses. Um, but he had also had a bunch of other different types, which look like they could be different gods for different things. Not necessarily gods you would know. Being a surface dweller, you know probably more of the general pantheon of the, the area, but anything like the Darrow's gods or the uh, uh or the Durgar's gods or or even the the deep gnome gods um you do know that when it comes to drow it's spider queen <laughs> it's lulf um but the uh other denizens of the deep can't really say but they they are they do obviously look like religious symbology. He he wakes up wakes up. Oh, well, you call me. As an incarnation of Dinkarazan. This is all part of my divine plan. <laughs> Don't worry, you're doing exactly as I planned you to. Right, roll me in attack. He is literally still at zero hit points. <laughs> uh, it, you hit him and he, he falls back unconscious. <laughs> He's at zero hit points, so in any case, he was going unconscious. Yeah, hit him. All you need to do is hit him. You didn't really do any damage, but it was just like... Uh, uh. He, he's doing his, his, his maniacal laughter and you just...
function. And with that, we'll call it for the evening. You know, I called this I called this episode Dark Wanderings. I suppose it kind of works. Kind of works. You track down Blupito so quickly. Just because he was like, there's people in the way. I mean, Rod was making a thing, but he's also irritable. <laughs> he was just this dwarf-esque Darrow, just leaning against the walls like I ain't doing anything, so <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sit here and Something should happen, people move out of the way, yeah, maybe he'll walk forward, you know? It's, he was just not making a big deal about it at all. And plus, he easily took out the... Everybody else took out the spiders without, any, without his help anyway, so... They were, it wasn't a hard encounter. Uh, with that, I will also say you all level up. Because the thing about this adventure, it does not give me milestones, so I have to make them up. And I think uh, discovering uh, uh, Pito's duplicity uh, uh, will gain you a level. Mm. Ah, sir. Um, Warlock. Yes. And then, then there's, then there's also the question: <laughs> Should I take identify? <laughs> I think it's a first level spell, so. For for being a relatively inactive journey because of uh roles. <laughs> But you had some people who rolled the counters, so that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, you can take a feed if you want. All are open to you. All right. We're getting in the stream there. Say goodnight, stream. Is it, is it Thursday yet?